their way. Have we ever tried to meddle in other countries' elections? Oh, probably, but uh, it was for the good of the system in order to avoid the communists from taking yeah. over. For example, in Europe, uh, uh, in 47, 48, 49, uh, the Greeks and the Italians, we... We don't do CIA. that now, though. We don't mess around other people's well, elections, Joe. Yeah. Mm, 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 <laughs> only for a very good Can cause. Can you do that? Do a Vine video on a former CIA director. Only for a very good cause in okay. the interests of democracy. All right, thanks for being here. It's good always great you. to see you. I think that clip should Only just be played video. over and over and over on every mainstream television news network for the next, I don't know, several months until people get it into their head that this is the face of the CIA. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Well, we, we do interfere in other people's elections, but only for a good cause. <laughs> Can we make a Vine clip of that? Oh, I love you. Let me touch your hand in solidarity. Oh, oh, you, oh you're so wonderful. It's just everything. That clip is truly everything about the establishment system, the status quo as it exists right now. It's the former director of the CIA laughing with his good friend at Fox News about how, yeah, of course we interfere with other people's elections. Of course. Don't even ask such a stupid question. Anyway, so... <laughs> In the midst of all this Russian influence, interference in the elections, they, they got Trump elected, they, you know, this type of thing gets just slides into the end of these little five-minute info nugget segments that they inject you with on the uh, TV news. And no one in mainstream land would even think to notice a clip like that, let alone talk about it. But, uh, well... To be fair, I mean, here we are. I mean, obviously, you guys have seen this already, and, you know, I'm sure CNN or other reputable mainstream outlets have told you all about Mueller indicts 13 Russian nationals over 2016 election interference. And there are some definite problems with that narrative that they're presenting even in that uh, headline. Like, for example, one of the uh, one of the memes that they use to sway the election. Satan, if I win, Clinton wins. Jesus, not if I can help it. Press like to help Jesus win. I, you, can't, you cannot make this stuff up. If I was trying to write a stupider idea about the election and if I was writing some sci-fi fantasy several years ago about the 2016 elections and how stupid it would all become I couldn't have made up anything as ridiculous as this that this is apparently this is why Trump got elected this is why I didn't vote for Hillary because I saw this meme it's so unbelievably stupid and no one I mean no one is taking it seriously and there are so many holes that you can pick apart in this including the fact that, oh yeah, by the way, uh, most of these Russian ad buys occurred after the election. But, I mean, don't let a timeline get in the way of a good story. Or, how about this one? Hillary Clinton outspent Russians 53 to 1 and lost. <laughs> so, oh my god, they spent $1.2 million. Well, uh, Clinton spent $800 million and, you know, she didn't, she didn't win. So, um, absolutely. I mean, just top to bottom, this is just a stupid pack of lies. So, I think we know by now, some of the things that we could say to counter this Russiagate stupidity that is sweeping the the nation internationally at this point. Um, and one of them would be exactly what James Woolsey admitted there. Ha ha ha, of course we interfere in other people's elections. And this is not controversial in the least. In fact, this is a part of Russiagate that has been talked about before. Although not enough, not stressed enough, but yes, I mean, even Channel 4, America's long history of meddling in other countries' elections, or the LA Times, the US is no stranger to interfering in the elections of other countries, or NPR, uh, database tracks history of US meddling in foreign elections, uh, or Washington Post, the long history of the US interfering with elections elsewhere. This is not controversial in the least. America has Time and again, by far and away, the large majority of interference in elections over the past half century have been the U.S. interfering in elections. According to the research of this Carnegie Mellon researcher, there were 117 partisan electoral interventions between 1946 and 2000. That's around one of every nine competitive elections held since the Second World War. And the majority of these, almost 70%, were cases of U.S. interference. But it gets worse. These are not all from the Cold War era. 21 such interventions took place between 1990 and 2000, 
of which 18 were by the U.S. 18 of 21 U.S meddling in foreign elections in the 90s. And that's just from this database. And, you know, I mean, how much can you really trust Don Levin and his database and how accurate is it? And could you, you know, I'm sure there are things to be contested with that data. But at any rate, it paints the broad picture that the vast majority of election meddling is done by the U.S. So that's the part of Russiagate that, as I say, isn't, isn't even, it's not even conspiracy theory, you know, corners of the internet. It is as mainstream as it gets and widely acknowledged and admitted, but hey, that doesn't matter. I mean, American exceptionalism, when we interfere, it's for good reasons. But when Russian connected sites interfere in the election or Russian connected forces in any way do anything, then, then, oh boy, then there's some, some reckoning. Uh, but this is the part of Russiagate that I don't think is really talked about. Um, narrowly enough, anyway. I haven't seen it really discussed very much. Here's a, a tweet from Aaron Mate. Uh, Damn you Russian bots with your widely read mainstream sources and your factual accuracy. Referring to a Washington Post headline, Russia used mainstream media to manipulate American voters, pointing out that Russian-controlled Twitter accounts, Albright said, were far more likely to share stories produced by widely read sources of American news and political commentary. The stories themselves were generally factually accurate. This is the part that it boils down to, is that even if we were to swallow hook, line, and sinker the uh, the DNC story, that it was a Russian, ha- they they hacked our our, 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 our emails, they hacked our database, and thereby hacked the election. Again, whatever that means. Uh, the only thing they are saying is, these dastardly Russians have shown the people the truth, the actual real truth about what we were saying to each other. <laughs> I mean, that is the point of all of this. It's the truth. And uh, this is pointed out in some of the comments here, like, uh, for example, Ludwig W. Uh, it gets better. The Washington Post was apparently the second most cited source by these Russian bots to manipulate American voters. RT was 19th. What do you make of that? So these Russian bots are spreading the Washington Post around like it's uh, like wildfire. And uh, RT is not one of the sources that they tend to spread. But somehow or other, it's, you know, it's, there's there's Russian influence by spreading Washington Post articles. And I think this is the, the thing that really sums it up for me. The day has come. Accurate news stories threaten American democracy. Accurate news stories threaten... I mean, that's that's what this boils down to. Actually accurate information, if it's connected to... If it comes from some sort of Russian source, must thereby be some dastardly plan to under, undermine democracy, blah, blah, blah. That's ridiculous. And And think about the inversion that they're trying to get you to believe right here, is that truth... Well, if it comes from the wrong source, don't listen to it. Even if it is true, even if we admit it's true, even if we ourselves write it and publish it, if you're getting it from a Russian source, then it's being used to manipulate you. Don't listen to it. <laughs> this is this is absolutely 100% bl- Big Brother. This is the state coming in and telling you it is right to believe it and, and swallow it and not question it when we say it. But when someone else says it, even if they are quoting us, don't believe them. Don't listen to them. You can't listen to those, that that damn truth when it's pesky and gets in the way of our agenda. That's what this boils down to. They are literally trying to control, not only control truth, but control your response to truth. And that is, I mean, if they accomplish that and they already have, as I'm sure many of my American listeners know from their daily conversations with the indoctrinated... uh, people out there, uh, they already have, to a large extent, convinced people, 100% hook, line, and sinker, to go along with this. If you're hearing this from a Russian-connected source, whatever that means, and keep in mind, the, you know, the, 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 the lords of what is, an, what is not propaganda have deemed the Corbett Report Russian propaganda, despite the fact that I'm not Russian, I have no Russian contacts, no Russian sources, I've never set foot in Russia, I'm not on Putin's payroll, but, but what I say is is in line with Kremlin's foreign policy because it's against NATO and NATO imperialism. My God, this is just, it's absolutely outrageous. And this is what it boils down to. Um, They are controlling not only the truth, but your reaction to truth. And unless we work with all our might to uh, to expose this and undermine these psychological operations that the mainstream media, in conjunction with their friends at the CIA, are trying to run on you right now, 
it's game over. It's game over because so many people are falling for it right now. Anyway, that's the perspective I wanted to bring to this Russiagate nonsense and hype. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.